Is Payday Free worth your time and money? Well, that's exactly what you're going to learn in this video game review of Payday Free. This is a co-op first-person shooter, very much in the vein of Deep Rock Galactic or Left 4 Dead. And I'm going to be telling you everything I think about this game. I'm going to be showing you footage in ultra-wide if you are an ultra-wide gamer. And I'm going to be describing what I think about the game, all its pros, its cons, and whether you should actually buy the game. So... This whole guide is fully timestamped and chapter. Let's dive right into the content. So what are the positives of Payday Free? Well, several positives are pretty apparent. One thing is that this is a fully cross-platform game. So you can be playing on the PC like I am, and you can play with friends on the Xbox or the PlayStation. This is something that I really do think is amazing, and I do think that more games need to do. Unfortunately, still, it's a very small minority of games that you can play in cross-platform. And for people like me that are getting a little bit older, I'm 31, it really helps because a lot of times your friends are on different consoles or different platforms than you are. And I can confirm that the cross-platform play does work in this game. Another positive to Payday 3 is you have both stealth gameplay and action gameplay. If you like to do missions stealthily, that's definitely a possibility and something you can absolutely do. However, if you like to go in, run and gun, that's absolutely the case as well. You can do that. So this does kind of cater to multiple play styles. And so that's a really, really cool thing. And some of the gameplay mechanics regarding this can be quite challenging. So if you're a gamer that likes to go in with a little bit of a challenge, this can be a really good option for you. So as for the widescreen support, the widescreen does work really well. I personally play on 21 by 9, but I believe 32 by 9 is also supported. And I had no problems with the widescreen. It worked natively without any problem. The settings menu is also fairly complete. You have a wide variety of options with DLSS and FSR supported, as well as a large degree of resolution options. A lot of games kind of falter in this way. The graphics or the resolution options aren't well done. And I think Payday 3 actually did pretty good in this regard. So moving on to some of the negatives of Payday 3. Unfortunately, I have to report that there are way more negatives to this game than there are positives. One of the big things that you're going to notice in this game is a horribly, horribly, horribly made lobby system. So when you're actually trying to party up with people... There is no VOIP, there is no pre-lobby planning. So you really don't know if your teammates want to go in hot, they want to do stealth. You really don't know what they want to do. And this can create an incredibly frustrating experience. Also, the servers are an absolute disaster, with crashes being very apparent. When I was playing with my friend yesterday, at least 50 to 60% of our games resulted in crashes. And we have to basically re-party up and we start actually looking for people. The other big problem in this game that I think is one of the game's hugest flaws is there's no built-in VOIP. For a game that prides itself on teamwork and is basically all about a co-op experience, there being basically no way to communicate in-game other than with crude text with your teammates results in a disastrous situation. You can't really coordinate efficiently with your teammates. And most of the time, this just results in a very, very frustrating experience. In terms of the core gameplay loop, I also think that Payday 3 is not up to standards for a 2023 game. This really looks like it was made in 2013 to 2015. The graphics themselves, even though the graphics options were fairly solid, are not very realistic and lifelike. And the actual gameplay itself is very repetitive and monotonous. A lot of the things, especially like the Fermite when you're trying to break in the bank vaults, is extremely slow where you'll be sitting there defending wave after wave of enemies for up to 5 to 10 minutes. The robbers versus police aesthetic is pretty done pretty well, but unfortunately the police themselves don't really seem to be very smart and the AI is extremely, extremely dumb. Specifically, any of your AI compatriots are basically worthless. They won't even pick up bags of money. They'll just sit there basically standing next to you and they're basically useless. This means that you absolutely must party up with four real life people and you really need four real life friends because as we talked about, the VOIP and inbuilt system for finding teammates is extremely bad. So to get payday free and actually make it worthwhile, you really need to have a group of three other people that you're going to play with on an almost dedicated basis. And I think that Payday 3 really missed an opportunity here 
to build a larger community with some sort of matchmaking or like clan system where you could perhaps team up with people that you played with before. After a match ends, unless you added them to your friends list, you will not be able to rematch into a new match with people you played with before, which again breaks even the immersion more and makes finding good teammates incredibly, incredibly difficult. So with a combination of graphical flaws, huge server issues, and just generalized lack of gameplay finesse, I really think the negatives of Payday Free far, far outweigh its positives. So now I want to talk about the value proposition of Payday 3 and its different additions. So the base game of Payday 3 is $39.99 and there's a silver edition for $69.99 and a gold edition for $89.99. Now basically what each of these editions give you is the standard edition just gives you the base game and basically just what you're seeing right here. The silver edition gives you the base game plus being able to play three days early, which is now passed and expired from this point. And it also allows you to have two extra heists because you get a season pass for up to six months. And the gold edition, the basically the premium edition, the highest end edition, gives you a one year season pass. It gives you a variety of masks and other cosmetics. And basically this will give you four additional heists in the end of the first year. What do I think about the value proposition of this game? I think, honestly, it's pretty atrocious. At $39.99, I could kind of see you buying this game. I would not recommend it at all, but I would say that there is some value to it because you will probably get 20 to 30 hours of gameplay out of this, so your value proposition is probably going to be a little bit under a dollar an hour or a little bit over a dollar an hour, depending on how much you replay these missions. I would say to play each heist once will probably take you anywhere from 10 to 15 hours. But if you were to play each heist on each difficulty, I would say you would probably get around 30 to 40 hours of content. In terms of the silver edition and the gold edition, I think they are absolutely atrocious value. I could not possibly see spending $89 for this game. I think it's, it's kind of crazy, especially given the value, the graphics, all the bugs and everything that I've said before about the problems with the game. I just don't think this is a game that you're going to spend more than 40 or 50 hours on. Even if you're a real big fan of these co-op first person shooters, I just don't think you're going to stick with it that long. There's too many flaws to this game. And even though it is fun for a few hours, that fun quickly diminishes. So in terms of value proposition, I think it would be best to wait until this game is on sale for approximately $15 to $20. At that point, you're probably going to get a much more polished experience because they will have fixed all the multiplayer servers and bugs, let's say six months to a year from now, and you're probably going to be getting a dollar an hour or less in terms of, you know, if you're buying it at $20, you're definitely going to be getting your money's worth. 39 is the absolute limit. Do not pay more than this for this game. So now if you jump to this part of the video or you want to know my final thoughts, a TLDR of my whole video, I would not recommend you buy this game. I don't think it's up to snuff. I think for 2023, the game is a disappointment. I was really disappointed, and I got this game for free, guys, from a key website. And I will tell you this right now. Even though the developers gave me this game, I felt like just installing it and wasting my time playing it was pretty bad. And that's saying something, guys. If, if you got a game for free and you still didn't enjoy your time with it, then that is something to say that it is pretty bad. Even though I think the game technically does work and the ultra wide is good, the settings menu is good, and there was some good things about the game, ultimately my fun level in the game just plummeted after the first couple hours playing, and I just really don't think that you're going to stick with this game for more than a week or two. I would highly recommend waiting for six months to a year, wait until the game gets patched, and wait until the price drops to $20 or less, and then I think you may have a good time if you're into a co-op shooter. I will say for one big positive that this, the crossplay did work very well. So if you have friends on multiple different devices, this might be an option if you're looking for a co-op first person shooter. But my recommendation would be to pass on this game and check back in in another year. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps get this content out to more people. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next review.